Like, why is this idiot got his tent set up in a hut with the fly on? Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the video. So we're at Boona Munduk Hut. It's the second last hut from Albany. We've only got a few more days of the Mundabidi left. So I wanted to do a bikepacking gear check video for you. A gear check for the Mundabidi. So I've got most of my stuff out that was already out. There's a little bit of gear still on the bike and my tent's still set up. So I'm gonna go through everything with you and show you what I've got. So I've got quite a bit of stuff here. I think we'll start with what's still on the bike. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but there's a few marsh flies hanging around, which is a little annoying. All right, so on the actual bike, I've got the Apajura bike packing bags. I think they're the backcountry type. I've got the larger size of everything, the under top tube bag, really good. The top tube bag, it's a little small, but it's good. The saddle bag, this is the large. Now, if you guys decide to go for these Apajuras, just keep in mind that the large bag, if your seat post is too low or your bike's small, you might have an issue with it hitting the wheel. It's actually an issue that I sometimes have to deal with, depending on how full it is, or if it's sort of dropped down like that. So that's just something to keep in mind. Look at the measurements of the bag and just make sure your seat is gonna be high enough to have the large installed. And then on the front, I've got the handlebar bag. This is the large as well. And similarly with the large, if you've got a lot of suspension travel, uh, sometimes the bottom of the bag might touch the wheel. So I've got it strapped up. And just keep that in mind if you go for the large bags. So we'll start in this Apajura bag here. We have our PLB. That's for emergencies. It's just like a locator beacon thing. We've got a compression bandage for snake bites. I also have some dental floss and toothpaste. So I just, what I do is I just refill these little toothpaste things with a bigger toothpaste. I've also got nail clippers. Then this front bag here, this is a Rock Bros bag. I really like these ones. You get them off eBay pretty cheap. They're a little bit bigger than the Apajuras, which is nice. And inside this, we have a microfiber to clean the GoPro lens. Our Brighton 330 GPS to track the ride, put it up on Strava. It's not on Strava, did you even do it? And one battery pack, that's a 10,000 milliamp hour. Just put that with the other ones there. We also have a few lucky bands. They always come in handy. Uh, whoops, dropped it. Spare GoPro bolt. And we also have a can opener. Not that I've had to use that. And that's it for the front one. The other ones are all empty because most of my gear is out. Ah, but we do have stuff in the under top shoe bag. This is just a case for my Bluetooth headphones. These are really good. This is a nature hike. You get them off eBay or Amazon and it's a foldable backpack. I've used this on quite a few tours now. I'd highly recommend one of these. They come in handy a lot every time you do a shop. We also have off eBay some cheap arm covers just to cover from the sun. I also had a set of leg ones, but I left them in Pemberton because I wasn't really using them. We have a roll of electrical tape, just got it from Bunnings. And we have some, uh, what do you even call that? String, cotton. Actually, I think it's synthetic, just for repairing the bags and stuff like that. There's also stuff in the other side of this. So we have our tire levers. We have some reusable cable ties. I have a bunch more of these over there. Highly recommend the reusable cable ties. They're reusable because they have a little button you can press to release them. So if you put them on something and you mess it up or if you want to use them just to strap stuff on, you can do that and they're super lightweight. I picked these up from JCar. And they're, yeah, pretty cheap. We have our 
Topeak multi-tool and this has a chain breaker on it as well. Super handy if you chain breaks. A Bic lighter, just one of the smallest ones they sell. I got it from a tobacco smoke shop. We have a spare shifting cable. We also have a couple of these chain links. Uh, 10 speed for me. Definitely recommend to take a few of these in case you break a chain. And there's some needles for that thread that you guys saw before. We also have a spoke tool. Some park tool tire patches. There's something else in there. I'm not too sure what it is. Oh, and just that leftover chain link that I had to change. If you guys have seen my vlogs, you know what happened. Now, also on the bike, I have the quad lock phone mount. I definitely recommend these for touring. Super handy. It's just very easy to clip your phone on and unclip your phone. You can also use it. Um, I mean, it's normally easy unless you're, you know, doing something on camera, in which case it becomes more difficult. You can also have it that way as well, which is pretty cool. I also have a USB bike light. This light, so I'll bend it around so you can see it. Just picked it up off eBay. I think it was about 15 bucks. Great little lights, lightweight, and you can just plug it into your battery pack, which is cool. A couple of reusable cable ties hanging on there because it's just where I mount my selfie stick. And a few of these crumb straps holding up my Apertura bag. I've also got the Profile Designs T4 Aero Bars on there. I've used them a bit, but it more came in handy to mount my tent bag and my tarp, which I'll show you guys later when I pack the bike back up. And if I didn't mention it, these Apertura food pouches are great. These are the biggest sort. I definitely recommend these. Even though they're under the Aero Bars in this case, they're still super handy. As for gearing, this is a three by, uh, I'd say 40, 30, 22. And it's a 10 speed. I've got an 1140 on the back. Whoa, that's interesting. <laughs> As you can see, it's something funky going on there. Might need to tighten that cassette on. I'm glad I did this video today. I also have the Goat Link extender and that allowed me to use a 40 or even up to a 42 with this Shimano SLX derailleur. I did try and I actually managed to get a 46 on there. It just wasn't quite smooth. Got to sort that out. Uh, on this side, I don't know if you can see that through there, that's a moon rear light. You know, just sometimes you end up riding in the dark on the roads, so just in case I had that on there. Couple of side load giant water bottle holders. These are good, you need to be able to get it out of the side when you have the under top shoe bag on there. And duct taped on here, I have a couple of uh, tubes, because I'm not running tubeless. I'm running, on the front, this tire's been through almost two Mundabitties now. This is the uh, Swab Racing Ralph. I think it's a 2.1. And the back is a Maxxis Ardent Race. And I got this changed at the start of the ride, and that's a 2.2, so those Tubes are good for both those sizes, which is good. No complaints on either of the tyres. This one's had a bit of wear through the whole Mundabitty now. And it's a giant uh, XTC 29er. Uh, it's a few years old. I think it's a 2015 model, I'm pretty sure. Aluminium. And does the job. I definitely recommend a hardtail for the Mundabitty. I like having the front suspension, even though mine have kind of failed. <laughs> It's uh, just, just a nice to take some of the impact out of your hands. All right, now we're gonna go through all the other gear. The lighting's kind of bad over this side, so I'll be quick. So you saw most of that stuff already. Here I have a bike lock. Yeah, it's heavy. It's a, probably about an eight mil chain, but I get pretty paranoid in places like Midland, Collie, Manjimup, Albany. You know, you're not gonna wanna leave your bike unattended without a good lock. Yeah, so that's the lock. You can just pick it up at Bunnings. 
And likewise, that's just like a lock wood lock, nothing special, the green one, I guess. And I've got the key on one of these bands because then you can wear it around your arm or your wrist, which is good. I also have a bunch of these grunt straps. You already saw a couple on the bike. Now these are awesome. They're only a few bucks each. I think those are 400 mil and 600 or something like that. They're lightweight, they're you know, plastic, so they're not gonna scratch anything up. And yeah, you can use them to strap your bags up, to fix issues that you've got if something breaks, or to strap food on and stuff like that. Definitely recommend those. Similarly, here's all the other reusable cable ties I have. Again, they come in super handy. J car, pick some up, you won't regret it. I use them for everything. For example, strapping my selfie stick on the bike, I use those reusable cable ties. This is a Sandmark Action Gear. I've only had this a little while, but I think it's a really good selfie stick. It's a little expensive, but it's strong and pretty durable, I think. So it's doing a good job. It's another lackey band. You saw some of them already. Here I just have a lightweight, somewhat waterproof wallet. This is my Wanderer um, headlamp. You can pick these up, or at least you could at BCF, and they're great because they're very small very lightweight and it has a fairly decent battery life, a few different settings, definitely recommend those. This is just my dual recharger for my GoPro batteries, obviously one battery is there, the other's in the GoPro. A bunch of different cords, I mean that probably doesn't interest you guys too much. What I will say is I tend to take two of the most important ones like my phone charger and yeah, depending on how many things I have to charge, I take two or three of different cords. And here you already saw this battery pack, the Anchor, that's a 10,000 milliamp hour. So this is a Signet 20,000, Comsol 20,000, Rav Power 20,000. I just picked up the cheapest ones I could from cash converters and marketplace. And earlier on in the trip, I also had another 10,000 milliamp hour. And between these and that one, that made me to Pemberton and then I recharged them all in Pemberton. Then I left one there in Pemberton. I also have my phone, Google Pixel, nothing too interesting. These are my Shure Bluetooth headphones, which I sort of mentioned before. Great headphones, they're good because they're sort of noise cancelling because they fit in your ear quite tightly. And which for me, I like that. I like to have the background noise of the bike blocked out sometimes. Uh, the only thing I don't like about these is the hands-free picks up all the background noise, so. I don't know what Shaw was thinking there, but you can hear everything quite well, which is annoying when you're trying to have a phone call with someone. Here we have a Comsol wall charger. You've got three USBs and one USB-C. The USB-C is a pain in the ass, but the, you know, the USBs are good. I've got an adapter for that. And this is good because you can pop these off and you have other country adapters you can put on there. And the one that's it's built in with is the US, which is cool. Here I have a spare GoPro. This is just a seven silver, nothing special. A couple of spares for my gimbal, which I'm using now. This is just a soft bag to protect the spare GoPro and the other electronics. Here I have a few spare micro SD cards. Uh, I think they're 64 gigabytes each. This is my Sea to Summit Alpha Pot. Highly recommend these pots. They're lightweight. They distribute the heat quite well, and it's cool how the handle like swings around to hold the lid in place, so you can fill it up with stuff when you're putting it in your bag, and then clip the handle so all the stuff stays together. That's really cool. As for my clothes, there's some stuff here. I've got a spare pair of socks. I always try and keep the socks clean, the spare pair clean. I have a pair of thermal pants thermal uh, base layer top. These are some real tree like long johns basically. This is a North Face fleece and this is her DHB, just a rain jacket for the bike. I've worn it only a couple of times, mainly when it's been too cold at the huts is when I've worn those. The huts do get pretty cold, especially down this way. All right, moving to the right. Toilet paper roll, essential. Just pick one up. Oh, it was on the toothpaste, toothbrush, great. 
just pick one up and just keep putting a bit of toilet paper on it every now and then. Definitely you want one of these because a lot of the huts don't have toilet paper. Uh, here we have a toothbrush and I've cut it smaller so it uh, was a little bit lighter weight, you know, bite packing, that's what you do. This is the box for my 360 degrees burner, highly recommend it, it's like a nice little lightweight well made burner and then I've just got some, yeah, gas mate, 450 grams just because it's what they had at Sports Power in Manjimup. Moving along. Got a sponge, I just cut like one you see in a house in half, and that was what we used. Here I have some soy sauce, some Tabasco sauce, and some Chipotle Tabasco sauce, just to give it a bit more taste for the rice. The other food we've got at the moment anyway is Oreos, some long grain rice, that was a kilo, some barbecue shapes. We had some Heinz baked beans, but we ate them. It's a kilo of sugar there. And we had a kilo of quick oats. We've also got some fresh bread from the bakery in Warpole. And we've got some salt and vinegar Pringles. They're almost empty though, I think. So food, I've just been stocking up in each town. And I don't use anything, you know, like the lightweight dried foods. I just buy whatever I can from the supermarkets. Here we have another lighter. And we've got a measuring cup. This just makes it a lot easier to work out how much for each meal. If you were smarter, you could, you know, measure it out before you leave in your pot and then you'd sort of know. But with that, I know how hungry I am and I know how much I eat, so it makes life easy. Here I've got some squirt chain lube. Definitely recommend it's a wax-based lube, so it's better for the environment. Just put it on every day, basically, or at the end of every ride. Got a Gerber. This is just like the basic... Gerber, it's about 60 bucks, multi-tool. Definitely want a multi-tool, you might need the pliers for something. Got a bit of dish soap. This is just a, it's actually shampoo. Here we have a med kit. This is the ultralight water type med kit five from Adventure Medical. We have a couple of Cedar Summit dry bags, and I mainly use those to store food once it's open. I'll put a lucky band around the food and then I'll also put the food in that just to stop spillage. It's nothing more annoying than like sugar or rice all through the bags. And now we start getting into some of the stuff that I have on me. I have my GoPro chesty and that's pretty much always on me. My cycling hat, the gloves, that's a two litre high vis camelback. Now you can pick these up pretty cheap on Marketplace. Otherwise, yeah, you know, camel back from a camping store or something like that. Got my, I think it's a laser, not too sure. Oh, it's a blade, laser blade. It's actually a road bike helmet, but I don't know. <laughs> I didn't have my mountain bike helmet on me when I started it, so I just wore that. I probably look more like a road biker than a mountain biker out here. Chamois cream, for me, this is pretty essential. Uh, this ASOS is vegan and cruelty free, so I'd recommend this one. Some Hawaiian tropical sunscreen. Maybe ideally you want a slightly smaller sunscreen, you know, container. I've probably only used, well, I might have almost used half of that. Then I've got my Camelback water bottles. That's, I think that's about a 500. That's 600, so that must be 700 and 600. 620, 720, 620. Now, normally I'll have this one full of sugar water just like, uh, you know, homemade cheap sugar gels. This one will be water and this one will normally be water. And depending on the distance I'm doing, I'll also have, you know, one or two liters in the Camelback. Uh, it's, it's so dependent on the person and also on what time of year and how far you're going. But typically for me, I'll have the amount of water I think I need plus like a liter extra just in case I run into any troubles. Now hanging up, I've got my bike gear uh, on some uh, paracord, and this is great. You, n you never know when you're going to need the paracord, seriously. Like, you can use it to string your bike up and adjust your gears, hang your washing, fix your tent. Definitely recommend it. Then we just have the jersey, just like a normal road cycling jersey. Cycling Nicks, these are the Giro men's uh, uh, 
Uh, yeah, bib shorts, I definitely recommend these. I find them pretty comfy. This is a neck buff. You can probably pick these up from any camping store. I got this one off eBay. It's been through quite a few tours now. These are great because you can use them to cover your ears and your neck. And it reduces the amount of wind noise that you get over your ears, which I really like. And also, obviously, you don't have to put sunscreen on those areas. And I don't really like putting sunscreen on. I mean, I prefer sunscreen to getting burnt, though. But where I can, I like to cover up. And then here I have a microfiber towel. It is a four monster microfiber towel. Nothing special, just it is what it is. I really don't like microfiber towels, but when you're doing stuff like this, you have to have things that are lightweight. So that's why we have that. Here I have my pair of socks that I ride with normally and my Bont Riot mountain bike shoes. They've been through a lot now. They're getting a little bit worn out. That's pretty much the gear that I have out here. Now I'll show you guys the tent and the sleeping setup, which is still set up in the other room. If you guys like the sort of longer detailed gear check videos, let me know in the comments. If you prefer something shorter, uh, you know, hit dislike, I suppose. Now the tent that I've got, Red Tail Outdoors, I bought this just before I left, the night before I left, I think, because I damaged my bivy bag and I wanted to try a tent out. Now, uh, it probably looks hilarious, like why has this idiot got his tent set up in a hut with the fly on? But my sleeping setup's too lightweight and it's been getting really cold at night, so having the fly on has created an extra layer of insulation. And I know last night, I didn't have all my clothes on, I didn't have socks on, I just had, you know, basic long johns and a jumper on. And I was just okay. And I know the other guy that was staying here, he just has like a sleeping bag and a sleeping mat. And he's sleeping in all the clothes he's got. He's sleeping in a, yeah, like pants, a shirt, two pairs of socks, and also waterproof pants and a waterproof shirt. So that's how cold he is in just a sleeping bag. That said, his sleeping bag is way too light. So, you know, FYI. I would definitely recommend these Red Tail Outdoor tents though. And to be honest, on the Mundabitty, you're never gonna get stuck sleeping outside of the hut, but you might not make it to a hut. You might have some technical problem and you might need to camp out in the bush. For that reason, I recommend something at least waterproof. Uh, last year, when I rode the Mundabitty, I used a bivy bag, which was good. I just find I really hate the condensation that builds up on the bivy bag and they're so small, they're very claustrophobic. So for that reason, I decided to go for a tent. Also, I found that I like to be able to just like hide in the tent when the bugs are bad, which they often are, especially further north, I found. So that was nice to have the bug net, which this tent has under the fly. It's a double layer tent. So you can see there, you got the bug net. Inside, I've got the sleeping setup. Try and get some light in there so I can show you. There's a lot of condensation build up. Now we have the sleeping bag, which is a tropical summer sleeping bag. It's definitely too lightweight. Then in the slide, the sleeping bag, we have a fleece, which is having the extra layer has helped a lot. Then we have the air pillow and the air mattress. Hopefully you guys can see that all okay. And I'll go through and tell you what all that is now. So the sleeping bag, which I definitely wouldn't recommend, <laughs> is a Nico outdoor sleeping bag. It says it's good for 10 degrees Celsius or above. I don't really believe that. It's probably good for like 15 or 20. <laughs> like it's not very, not very warm. Um, and then my fleece, it's actually bigger, it takes up more space when packed than the sleeping bag, but it's a Cedar Summit premium fleece liner. I really like the fleece liner. It's, sometimes I've only slept with that instead of the sleeping bag because it breathes better. Then the sleeping mat, which I highly rate, I highly like it, highly regard it, is an REI Co-op Flash insulated air pad. Not too sure if you can pick them up in Australia though, but it's a tomb style, it's lightweight, it packs up super small, and it's, considering that, it's very comfortable. I sleep really well on it. 
We also have a Mac pack dry bag that we put the tent in when we're riding. Oh, and also the travel pillow. It's a Cocoon Hyperlite air pillow. Nothing special. The Actually, I'll show you guys. This material, uh, it's quite slippery. So I used to have a problem where the pillow slipped around quite a lot. What I've started doing is I'll wrap it in my, uh, like my thermals or a t-shirt or something like that. And that solves that issue. So if anyone knows a better sleeping bag I could use for, I kind of am a cold sleeper. So I guess it would need to be like something suitable for summer, spring and autumn. I'm not really like someone that's going to be camping in winter. Let me know. Obviously it needs to be vegan. I'm not going to use down, but what I want is something lightweight and yeah, something that packs up easy. So if anyone knows, let me know in the comments what you'd recommend. But I would definitely recommend the sleeping mat, the fleece, the pillow's okay, and the tent. At this point, I highly recommend it. So I think I missed a few things out. This is just my spoon. It's a Light My Fire. I think they're made in Sweden. Good little spoon, but because it's so thin through here, they tend to snap. So just be really careful if you get this type. I'd recommend something with a fatter middle part, stem part. And then on the bike, hopefully the lighting's okay. We have the cat eye mirror. I mean, it's a little bit weird to have it on the, I guess for a mountain bike, but I like to be able to see what's behind me. These mirrors are really good. They're super light and small and compact and they don't vibrate around so you can see everything. I'm used to having one from being on the road. You can pick one of these up online. These are the Ergon Grips. Highly recommend these. They're super comfortable because they stop your wrist from dropping down when you're holding the bars and so you don't get sore hands and wrists. And I also like having this extra part just for another place for my hands, but you can get them without the, what do you actually call these? The bar ends anyway. And obviously there's the clothes that I'm wearing. So this is just like a light white sports t-shirt. I've got some, I think they're New Balance running shorts, really good running shorts, and just a pair of flip-flops. You don't need to see that. I lost my last pair somewhere between Collie and Honeymoon Pool. So if anyone comes across a pair of Hamianas, black size men's 11, let me know. All right, so that's the gear check video. Hope you guys liked it. Hopefully you got something out of it. You can, you know, start to plan your own Mundabiti tour or, you know, any off-road mountain bike adventure, I suppose. If I miss anything, let me know. I might have, you know, you might have seen something that I forgot to point out. If you've got any questions, just leave a comment. And any, like, you know, ideas or recommendations of gear, let me know. Especially about, like, the sleeping bag, for example. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to hit subscribe so you catch the last few vlogs. We're heading into Albany in the next few days. Thanks for watching.